Okay, here's the next video. I went about two thirds of the way through and then I completely botched it. So the nice thing is I already have some writing on the screen that we'll get to take a look at in a second. So what this video talks about is the PRISM algorithm. And this is in the slides where I have a lot of text. What I'm gonna do is I've taken away all the text from the slides and instead I'm just gonna talk through how it works. But the goal of the PRISM algorithm is that we want to find a rule that's 100% accurate. And what it does, which the notes in your reading emphasizes, is that we're going to start with a class. We're not going to start with a feature like the decision tree does. We're going to start with a class. And so we would pick a random one or the first instance, like the notes say. So in this case, we can say the random one was the first instance. And so what we're going to deal with is we want to get 100% accurate. And so we've seen what accuracy is that it's the number of positive examples, or in other words, it's the support of the rule divided by the support of the antecedent. We want that to be equal to one. Um, if we think about that with the data sets we've seen, in decision trees, when you actually classify, you're kind of far down in the depth of the tree, and so your rule is kind of complicated. It's like something if whatever the test at the root node was, and then whatever the test at the child of the root was, whatever the test of the grandchild was, then you can classify it. The same thing's going to be in true, true in PRISM, that we're going to have a lot of antecedents joined by if, and what we're going to do is first we're going to find the first one, the best one we can find, then we'll find the next, second best one, the third best, and so on. That's the approach to PRISM. You might want to say, well, why can't we do more complicated things with OR and stuff? And that's because what the reason we don't do or, we only do and, is because this is a set of decision rules. And in the notes, it talks about trees versus sets or list of rules. We don't care which order these rules are going to happen in. We're just trying to find rules that describe our data. That's what data mining is about. If we have or, that's the same thing as saying, well, one rule can be true or another one can. If we have a list of multiple rules, we don't need or because we're okay with one rule or another. So the or comes from the list. It's not going to come from a bunch of antecedents being joined together. So if we consider the first instance, we're going to find rules that if something, 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 then play is equal to no. The first rule we want to consider is just going to be a single antecedent. So what our first rule that we're looking for is going to be is we're going to have if some feature is equal to some value for that feature. And that's our goal for the first thing we're going to build. So if we cross out all the instances that we have where play is equal to yes, all the ones that we're not considering, right now we're only trying to classify this one, two, three, four, five instances right here. So we want to find a rule that's going to be accurate for these five instances only. We don't care about the play is equal to yes ones, and we want the rule to have single features. So the outlook feature, there's two values for it, sunny or rain. So it's going to be in consideration if outlook is equal to sunny, then play is equal to no. If outlook is equal to rain, then play is equal to no. We want to compare those two, and the one that's the most accurate is the one we're going to keep. But that might not be the most accurate overall, because if temperature is equal to hot, or if temperature is equal to cool, or if temperature is equal to mild. Any of those three rules may be more accurate. So three possibilities for temperature, and if we keep going with that, there's two possibilities for humidity, two for windy. We add those up, there's nine possible rules we're going to consider, and so what we want to keep then is the one with the highest accuracy. And so remember accuracy, I'm, I'm going to keep harping on this, is the number of positive examples divided by the cover. If we have multiple rules with the same accuracy, then the tiebreaker is, okay, we want P to be as large as possible. We want the number of largest examples. And so in other words, if we have two rules that are 75% accurate, and one of them has a positive example of six, and the other one has a positive example of three, we would keep the one with the bigger number of positive examples because that would apply to more instances in the data set. And so we would have gotten the most bang for our buck that way. And if we have multiple ones that have the same accuracy and the same number of positive examples, then we just make a random choice like we've seen with other data mining outlooks. So what we have going on here on the next screen of writing 
is that if we look at two rules with Outlook, so if Outlook is equal to sunny, then play is equal to no, and if Outlook is equal to rain, then play is equal to no. I can write down what the number of positive examples is for each one, and then also what the support of the antecedent is for each one. And so all we want to do is we want to compare these. And so this one is 75% accurate if Outlook is equal to sunny, whereas if Outlook is equal to rain, it's only 50%. So this doesn't make the cut because we already know there's a better rule. And then what we would do is we would then consider the next of the nine rules. So then we would consider if temperature is equal to hot. And so we always keep the most accurate rule. We consider all the possibilities, but keep the most accurate single feature rule. The nice thing is that in my infinite wisdom, I know that this one is the winner, or it's at least going to be tied, and so I can choose it. So this is the most accurate single feature rule after I've compared it against all of the other eight possibilities. So then, at that point, what we need to do is we need to recognize, okay, what we've dealt with now is a single antecedent. We've dealt with if Outlook is equal to sunny. And so what that is like is that's like crossing out the entire Outlook column. What PRISM wants to do after that is it wants to add the next antecedent because right now we have 75% accuracy. We need 100% accuracy. And so we can't have a rule if Outlook equals sunny and Outlook equals overcast. That's, those two things are mutually exclusive, and so we would actually lose accuracy. What we want to do is we want to add another antecedent so that we gain accuracy. So we're going to add a new one here, and it's going to be if feature equals value, like our antecedents always are. And we're still dealing with play is equal to no. Until we've covered all the play is equal to no instances, we don't deal at all with play is equal to yes. So we have a three feature data set now, temperature, humidity, and windy. Temperature can take on hot, cool, or mild, so three possibilities. Humidity can take on high, and that's all. So the nice thing is when we're only dealing with the outlook is equal to sunny instances, we actually got a little bit simpler. Humidity only has one value. And then Wendy is still going to have um, true and false, though. So now we have 3 plus 1 plus 2. Now we have six possible rules to consider. And so what we want to do then is we want to compare them all, and we want to keep the one that's going to give us the highest accuracy. So if we think about if Outlook is equal to sunny, that antecedent, covered four instances. If Outlook is equal to sunny, then play is equal to no covered three instances. So we have 75% um, accuracy. We want to get something that's 100% accuracy. But all we're going to be accurate on is the three instances where Outlook is equal to sunny. And that's, um, that's kind of worth thinking about. This is something about PRISM. As we keep adding antecedents, we're going to be dealing with smaller and smaller parts of the data. And so what that means is we're going to have to write down lots and lots of rules. That's just kind of one of the things we have to deal with with PRISM. And so right now we have three instances left over. The reason we can't stop here is the accuracy is only 75% because there's this one little troublemaker right here where Outlook is equal to sunny and play is equal to yes. So it's a false positive for our rule. So what we want to add is, okay, what can we add that actually, that actually gives us more accuracy? Right now we're at 75%. So we consider all the possibilities. So we first start with temperature. If temperature is equal to hot, so our rule is if Outlook is equal to sunny and temperature is equal to hot, then play is equal to no. So the positive examples for that, there's two of them. Here's one, here's one. And the cover for that, so let's try to figure this out. So we, don't, we want the cover not just for temperature is equal to hot, but for outlook is equal to sunny and temperature is equal to hot. 
So here's one instance. Here's another one. We go down. This one's overcast and hot. Doesn't count because it's not both of them. Sunny and mild doesn't count. So we don't have any more where it's sunny and hot. So this rule is actually 100% accurate because the positive examples in the cover are the same thing. So this is the bar right now. We're trying to find another rule that's 100% accurate. The only reason we might not choose temperatures equal to hot is if there happens to be an, an example where we do even better, where we have um, a higher number of positive examples. So if we keep looking, so we could exhaustively search, but I think that would, would bore everyone. 